Hello, my name is Darren Willis, and this is my final project presentation for my cloud computing class at the Harvard University Extension School, CSCIE 90. And I'm going to do my final project presentation on GPU computing on Amazon AWS. Now before we get into GPU computing, um, I'd like to discuss what a GPU is first. Most people are familiar with a CPU, which is the central processing unit on a computer which is the brain of the computer that handles all the main processing on the computer. Now a GPU is a graphical processing unit and it, in the past it is typically handled processing for graphics on the computer. Now a GPU is nowadays is much like a CPU but in the past its development was much more specialized. Initially um, GPUs first developed what they called in two different groups vertex shaders and pixel shaders. Where vertex shaders were processors just designed to handle the geometry calculations for graphics, and pixel shaders were <coughs> processors designed to handle processing for graphical special effects. And nowadays, since it's evolved to have these processors, they don't call them vertex shaders and pixel shaders anymore, they just call them processors to handle more general computing on a GPU. To understand more what a GPU is in comparison to a CPU, I'd like to discuss some of the pros and cons of a GPU versus a CPU. Now the pros of a GPU compared to a CPU is that it has many more processors than a CPU. For example, a top of the line Intel CPU an i7-3960 has six core processors and a top of the line GPU from AMD, a Radeon R9-290X, has 2,816 what they call stream processors. Now NVIDIA's rival in, this, in the GPU business, the main principal rival is NVIDIA, and they call their processors on a GPU CUDA processors, which is just a proprietary name for NVIDIA because CUDA is a platform that they use for GPU computing. Now the cons of the GPU versus a CPU is that because a, a CPU has fewer cores they're typically able to get them run at a higher clock speed due to the fewer cores. For example the Intel i7 runs at 3.9 GHz and the AMD 290X runs at approximately 1 GHz. Another con is that a CPU is typically easy to program for, and so the GPU is, is more complicated to program. Continue on with the comparison of the CPU versus a GPU. I got this um, slide from NVIDIA's website on this comparison here. I'm just going to read the information to you. CPU versus GPU. A simple way to understand the difference between a CPU and a GPU is to compare how they process tasks. A CPU consists of a few cores optimized for sequential serial processing, while a GPU consists of thousands of smaller, more efficient cores designed for handling multiple tasks simultaneously. So there's your visual representation of a CPU versus a GPU. A GPU having thousands of the core and the CPU having six to eight cores, typically. Now we can discuss what GPU computing is. GPU computing is also known as GP, GPU, and what it means is um, to do, we can do general purpose computing on a GPU or graphical processor unit that was traditionally done on a CPU. Now this does not mean that you don't use a CPU when you do GPU computing, but that tasks that are going to be a lot more beneficial and run a lot faster due to the parallel nature of a GPU, those tasks are offloaded to, from the CPU to the GPU and handled on the GPU. Now some of the uses of GPU computing I like to discuss. Um, so GPU computing is beneficial for any massively parallel computing and it's um, especially if you want that computing done in real time. Um, for example versus a typical instance that would be used in an elastic MapReduce um, Hadoop cluster in Amazon AWS. You can do parallel computing there, but if you want it done in real time and computed faster, it's 
it's faster to do it on just a local host where everything's on the same chip. Um, that being said, you can configure in Amazon your HAD up cluster instead of using just CPU instances to actually use the same GPU instances that I'm going to use in my demonstration here in your HAD up cluster. So you can have these massively parallel GPU instances in this in your HAD up cluster with more and more um, instances of those GPUs. Um, GPU computing is obviously beneficial for graphics processing and scientific calculations, anything that involves formulas, compu heavy computations, um, and such, such as in physics, if you want to do collision detection and multiple, for, uh, multiple bodies, um, many types of physics simulations is, is, would be more efficiently done on GPU computing, bioinformatics, weather forecasting, cryptology, and much more. Um, another example of, of using GPU computing would be to do artificial intelligence processing, where in artificial intelligence you have many different branches, um, parallel paths, um, that could be done in real time and handled faster on a GPU. Um, a pop culture reference would be to do Bitcoin mining. Um, for the past <coughs> since the beginning of Bitcoin mining, much of that has been done on GPUs. Um, they handle that way more efficiently than a CPU to do Bitcoin mining. And <laughs> just as a pop culture reference, um, one Bitcoin now is worth over a thousand dollars. So people that were just using their GPUs um, five years ago, just mining away, um, that got thousands of them. They've they've earned millions of dollars just from mining Bitcoins from doing that a long time ago. Now to do GPU computing, we need to have a language in the platform um, in order to create our programs and run it on GPUs. The, the standard for GPU computing is the open standard, which is OpenCL. It's maintained by the Kronos group, which is the same group that maintains OpenGL for the open graphics standard. And OpenCL has been adopted by Intel AMD, Apple, NVIDIA, Samsung, ARM, and many others. Microsoft primarily promotes um, their own standard for graphics, which is called DirectX, and they have their own standard for GPU computing, which is called Direct Compute. <coughs> Although they, they do open up their platform from OpenCL as well. Now let's discuss GPU computing in AWS. Now, Amazon AWS, like I mentioned before, provides GPU computing in the cloud. And um, this is done on the EC2 services. And these EC2 instances are powered by NVIDIA hardware, NVIDIA GPUs. And they can be done in uh, three different types of AMIs, um, a Linux AMI, Windows 2008 server, and Windows 2012 server. Now I want you to think about, for those that have programming experience, um, the most simplistic um, program you can write is probably Hello World. As I mentioned before, GPU computing is more complicated than CPU um, computing, and it's more difficult to program for GPU computing. So, I mean, in Java, if you think about it, for those that are familiar with Java, or C++, I'm sure it's the same, um, writing Hello World would just be a few lines of code. Now in GPU computing, in OpenCL, what I'm going to show is a Hello World demonstration in Amazon AWS, which has been written in OpenCL, and it was provided <coughs> by an online book called the OpenCL Programming Book, and I have reference to it at the end of this presentation. Now, to do the Hello World demonstration, we have three files, a make file, to create the, the executable and two files, the hello.cl, which um, in OpenCL is called the kernel file, and that's ran on the host file, which is the hello.cpp file. Now, if we look at the hello.cl file, we can see that it doesn't look too complicated here. Um, moving on to the hello.cpp file is where it gets more complicated on the host file. 
This is due to the initial setup complications of writing an OpenCL. So there's three pages of the hello.cpp file in my PowerPoint here. So here's the first page. Um, as you can see, it's more than just a few lines of code. And here's the second page for, for creating and setting it up in OpenCL. And the last page. Now to run this demonstration in Amazon AWS, we'll cover um, four steps in general. Um, first, we're going to launch the AWS EC2 instance on the NVIDIA hardware, because that's what Amazon offers. They offer NVIDIA hardware for their GPU computing instances. And then we'll need to modify, make some modifications to the make file so that it will run in the Amazon version of the NVIDIA setup. And then we'll need to upload the files to the instance, and then we'll make and run the demo. Let's go ahead and start that now. So we'll go to our sign in to our Amazon Web Services and on AWS, and we'll go to our EC2 services. We'll go to launch instance. And we're going to need to look into the AWS Marketplace. And we're going to type in the search NVIDIA. And it pulls up our three flavors of NVIDIA AMIs. Um, and I'm going to select the Amazon Linux AMI, because that's what I'm doing my demonstration on, which is the top one here. Now, these are the details on the GPU instance, as a, they call it a G2.2x large instance. And this is the same instance that if you want to go away from the, the general small and micro instances in your HADOP Elastic Map Reduced instance on Amazon AWS, you can actually select the same G2, G2 instance in that, in that cluster. Now I want to show the cost of running one GPU instance, this particular one, on Amazon Linux. And it costs 65 cents an hour to run. Next we're going to configure our instance and run it. Um, there's not much we need to change from the defaults for this example, so we're just going to go to review and launch here. Our security group is already set up for what I'll need to use it for and go ahead and launch the instance. Now I'm not going to launch the instance here because I don't want to take time um, for launching the instance. I already have one up and running. So we're going to go to back to our EC2 services, look at our instances. I've already started one, it's ready to go. It's this instance here, G G2 instance. So I'm going to use SIGWIN to connect to it and SIGWIN to upload the files to it. So let's get the public DNS. into the instance. And we're going to upload the files that we need to run our demonstration on. Hello.cl file, hello.cpp file, and our make file. Before we can do that, we need to edit our make file. So that will run on our instance. 
Make this a notepad plus plus. We edit this path to NVIDIA here in our makefile. The OPT, NVIDIA, and then CUDA. We'll save this file. Now we are ready to upload all the files. Before I can upload it, I'm going to make a downloads file in here, folder. Okay, our three files are uploaded now. Let's go into our downloads directory on our instance. And there are our three files. And to create the NVIDIA version for OpenCL, we type in make. NVIDIA. Now we have our NVIDIA hello ready to run. So we will go ahead and execute that. And then for all that code on the OpenCL example, there is hello world. So we can go ahead and close out of this SIG1 instance here. And go back to our PowerPoint. And that was the demonstration. Now I'd like to discuss what I see, um, my personal view, and what I read about the future of GPU computing. What I see in the future is the full integration of the CPU and the GPU together. So you'd have the general computing capability of a CPU and a GPU. Now AMD calls this integration an APU, which stands for an accelerated processing unit. Where they're up and, and AMD APUs they have out now, um, the GPU and the CPU are not fully integrated, they're just on the same chip. Um, but they're still separate cores. And AMD employs what they call heterogeneous computing on their APUs where they're on the same chip, but they have access now to the same memory, so they don't have to um, copy back and forth memory between the GPU and CPU, so the, for the, so the transition between the computation of doing it on both is more seamless because they have access to the same pool of memory. Now, what I see in the future is that if you call them APUs, you could call them CPUs, but I, I see the full integration of the CPU and the GPU where you'll have the general processing of a CPU and all the massively parallel processors of a GPU, so you could call it like a 2,000, 3,000 core CPU or APU is what I see happening in the future. And this is where they're moving towards, um, in my opinion. So it would be all in one chip. And it may complicate some of the programming. It may not. Um, we'll see. And here are my references for my presentation on the next slide. And um, thank you all for your attention, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.